uh, uh, fortunately, I have something uh, really simple uh, to talk about. I hope I don't delay the lunch. Uh, so uh, let me thank the organizer to give me this opportunity. Uh, so I'll talk about something very seriously, uh, which from the uh, uh, maybe is somewhat uh, non non topological. But uh, uh, later on, you, you will see surprisingly, it's, uh, there is actually uh, contain a lot of topology in this project. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to uh, mention my students. This is really, really the driving force of this project. Uh, and he's in the audience. So, uh, usually in, in our textbook, we, we learn a lot about the linear response because those are commonly measured in, in experiments. Uh, but today, I want to man uh, mention something about this uh, nonlinear response. Uh, in particular, I pay attention to this uh, second order nonlinear response. Uh, so, the simple uh, example of this is like uh, this so called photo current. Uh, namely, you can apply some uh, uh, electric field, like uh, omega, and then you can pick up a current. Uh, uh, instead of omega, you can pick up the current at DC or two, 2 omega. So this is called a photo current or second harmonic generation. This phenomena uh, require uh, some inversion symmetry breaking in the crystal, so otherwise you wouldn't have this effective symmetry. Uh, yeah, so uh, uh, yeah, so the um, whenever when I look at the nonlinear response, I always ask myself this question. So uh, somehow I don't have a, a very simple picture about what I'm probing, so it becomes you know, clear. So I want to understand, uh, there's some simple interpretation of such experiments. What exactly are they probing? And uh, can they be used to detect some issues in physics, uh, in particular when a correlation is uh, important? So those are the, the questions I want to understand. So, so in this talk, I actually I talk about something really probably the uh, I think probably should be the first question uh, that uh, needs to be considered. This was the simple simple question that needs to be, to be considered uh, about this nonlinear response, which is uh, this truth like physics. Because for the linear response, we we know this uh, truth physics is probably the uh, one of the most pronounced uh, uh, experiment you can do, and uh, they show up everywhere. So, so we probably should pay attention to this two lecture this first. And uh, so I talk about this uh, non, uh, this thermal electric response, namely uh, uh, the probe, the, I probe some current, it can be either thermal current or the electric current. And my perturbation can be either the electric field or some temperature gradient. And uh, because this is nonlinear, this is a second order. So in principle, you can tune any of them. Uh, so, so there are like eight possible combinations you can uh, think about. So, so those are the, the, the experiments I'm thinking about. So, uh, so for, for uh, uh, people in the audience who may not uh, be familiar with Strud, so it's uh, one of the simplest, uh, or maybe not simplest, the most uh, pronounced uh, 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 maybe, uh, feature in, in, uh, in transport, in, in linear transport. And uh, so, so there's a this so-called truth weight, and uh, times is one over uh, high omega and plus some uh, realization time inverse. Uh, so this is a, 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 a simple like a linear transport, like the op optical connectivity. Uh, what is not that well known about this truth weight is that uh, uh, in, 2000, uh, in, in 1964, Kohn actually showed that uh, this uh, experimentally measurable uh, uh, property uh, is somehow directly related to some money body uh, uh, property of the, uh, the system. So it's actually related to the second derivative of the energy density with respect to this uh, uh, gauge flux, sorry, gauge field. So the, the idea is this you think about your sample. But the imagine your sample is, uh, is living on some torus, and then you, uh, the, you, you, you basically you insert some uh, 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 gauge flux, it's just electromagnetic gauge flux, but only through the torus hole. 
So this will uh, ge uh, generate some gauge field, uh, and then the ground state energy will change. And then you compute the dissection derivative, and that's happened to be the blue wave. And uh, this uh, formula itself is quite beautiful, actually. Uh, I think it's a, a somehow I, I, I like this result this a lot because um, um, it's sort of very deep. It's, a, it, it's independent of any details of the, of the system. And they tell you something about the, the experiment. And I think uh, Kung uh, talked about this mainly. I think it has a motivation about how to define insulator. Because uh, although we all measure, we work with insulators and metals, but uh, how do you sharply define it in the many body system? So, uh, so this is a sort of connected to that question. So we will try to uh, show some related phenomena in that and in the responses. Uh, so I, I should advertise that there are indeed two topological aspects of this uh, very solid state project. Uh, one aspect is that this, uh, these funds are related to something uh, uh, termed as a barrier temperature dipole, which I will uh, mention later. Uh, this was uh, uh, proposed by, by Liang Fu and collaborators. And uh, uh, so, so we all know barrier curvature is uh, uh, indeed a uh, related <coughs> topology. And, uh, what is really surprising uh, to, to me is that uh, to uh, correctly compute this uh, very uh, concrete uh, responses, you actually have to use uh, uh, chains and co chains somehow. So uh, this is very uh, surprising. And uh, I'm just trying to compute some response. I'm just doing some time, 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 time dependent transparency. But uh, to, to do it correctly, uh, uh, so, so this actually pointed out uh, by, by Anto in this very nice paper. Um, so, uh, so he was trying to compute the uh, uh, thermal for linear response. Uh, so, so uh, uh, okay. So the, just just to mention that uh, the thing I mentioned, uh, I tried to study is not completely uh, decoupled from the experiment. So there are indeed uh, uh, a lot of interesting experiments going on. Uh, so this is one of the fully electric response. You apply some uh, oscillating electric field this way, and you measure the current that way. And uh, at, at the DC, you are told this is nonlinear. And uh, what Liang Fu pointed out that is that uh, you are actually measuring this so-called uh, curvature the dipole. And this omega here uh, is this uh, well-known uh, curvature, this F. Uh, not, it's just uh, the Fermi Dirac function, and this is the integration of the Green zone. And uh, if you look at the coefficient in front, uh, you realize this is not uh, that far away from the true uh, coefficient. So, so this is a, a very nice experiment of progress. So the omega is omega of e, or the omega, omega of e. Of e. Yeah. So this will be is so like uh, you add some uh, oscillating vector field. Omega. In fact, uh, in their experiment, the omega is very low. It's uh, like 100 hertz. So the uh, so what, what is it? That, 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 that better curvature type. If you look at this uh, nice formula uh, developed by uh, them, so they it's a Fermi Dirac function times this uh, partial derivative of momentum, partial k a of this uh, better curvature uh, omega b. So how do you think about it? So there's a simple way to think about it. So the, you think about, uh, you, you start from, uh, uh, you, you, you have some Fermi Fermi Dirac function, you fill uh, some bands and with some barrier curvature. And this partial just means that uh, you, you, you basically, you, you move uh, this uh, field states a little bit uh, to the uh, k, k direction. And then you have uh, a non-equilibrium state. And uh, you compute the very curvature integral of that uh, uh, non equilibrium state. And I have compute uh, the difference of the two uh, divided by, by this uh, shift in moment. So that's what this very curvature is. So it's really the difference because we know the integral of very curvature is just the whole conductivity, the intrinsic part of the whole conductivity. So it's really, uh, it's really the difference of uh, the whole conductivity between the equilibrium state and the non equilibrium state. Um, 
So, so and this non-equilibrium state can be obtained by the usual Laplian uh, flux insertion argument. This is exactly the state from the uh, equilibrium to the bad one. So, so this can be generalized to many body systems. Uh, probably not the uh, not not uh, surprisingly, and uh, and similar to the responses. So the so the main result is this uh, relation between this uh, nonlinear and linear responses. So the I mentioned that uh, uh, we were uh, applying some maybe could be uh, electric field or time metric gradient, and uh, I measured some current, and uh, so there are just uh, this. Uh, in this uh, low frequency regime, we indeed uh, uh, have this, uh, this true behavior. And uh, this uh, true, uh, true contribution is related to exactly this, uh, uh, this uh, uh, adiabatic, we call it adiabatic derivative of the linear response with, uh, with, uh, with respect to the flux insertion or the, the gauge field uh, uh, insertion. So, so depending on whether you're dealing with thermal, or uh, electric, uh, so this A can be either uh, gravitational gauge field or this uh, electromagnetic field. So, so this has a sh sharp uh, meaning, uh, which I will uh, mention uh, in a second. So, so essentially, it's always like uh, you, so this, this nonlinear uh, response is really probe how the linear response change after I adiabatically insert some flux. That's, uh, that, that's the message. So this is about the the, 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 the part of the response. And the sigma here, as I mentioned, is a linear response, but it's always this uh, anisymmetric part. So that's the dissipationless part of the, uh, of the response. And this dissipationless part, they vanish when you have a no plus inserted due to uh, hypersymmetry. symmetry, we assume hypersymmetry. symmetry. So in fact, if you, even if you don't have, have, have a hypersymmetry, symmetry, you still have this contribution, but then you have additional terms. So the, but if you have kind of symmetry, this uh, uh, true, this uh, true, this uh, low frequency regime is uh, dominated by, by this true contribution, and uh, they, uh, this uh, anti-symmetric part they vanish by a equals zero due to kind of symmetry and the ensemble relation, but um, the adiabatic derivative is not. So the, uh, okay, so. Uh, so, so this is this is a try to uh, sharply define how I uh, 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 computed this uh, the derivative. So essentially, you can really adiabatically uh, turn on this a times delta a, uh, 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 j times delta a, and uh, but uh, together with the, this is additional term. This additional term is uh, uh, basically the the correction to the operator due to this uh, minimal coupling. So this is uh, just compute the, uh, the operator commutation with, uh, with uh, the polarization or energy polarization. So here, this Q are this uh, local uh, charge on the side. So everything is defined on side. So this uh, uh, X is a spatial position, and H is a, a local charge, uh, a local energy. So, uh, so the Q uh, two. Okay. So let me skip this. So we go to the, um, so, so the main message is comparing with uh, the true the linear response. Uh, I mentioned that uh, uh, the true the wave uh, is uh, in either t equals zero is the second derivative of this, uh, uh, this a uh, the, the gauge gauge uh, the gauge field. Uh, so it's not difficult to generalize so a finite temperature. So in fact, this uh, uh, this true the wave has a finite temperature for linear response. Uh, is exactly this. Uh, uh, it's a, a detailing derivative of the current with, with respect to the, the gauge field. So, so the reason is this, this uh, energy, how the energy dependent A, uh, this part of energy part of A actually is related to the current. That's, uh, uh, that, that's uh, basically the, the fundamental way to think about this uh, good, uh, good weight. Uh, so, so the, our result is to basically just move this up. Uh, in one order in response. So if you think about the linear response, so it's a part of the derivative, uh, the true contribution is part of the derivative of some expectation value. Uh, but uh, if you think about linear response, it will be part of the derivative of some linear response with, 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 uh, 
with, with respect to the, the, the clock sensor. So, so now let me mention why chain and uh, uh, cold chain need to be used uh, very briefly. So it's actually a, a known problem. So even for linear uh, thermal electric response, if you really try to compute it, uh, the, the naive Kubo response gives you uh, the, the, the wrong result. And the problem is this, uh, this magnetization and energy magnetization. So this was pointed out by many, many authors, uh, including uh, Anton has some, some very important work. I mean, basically, we learned this through the technique, uh, uh, chain and co-chain from, from Anton's paper. And, uh, and it's also interesting to, to know that we have uh, in this uh, appendix D. Uh, we talk about this uh, somehow. So, uh, so the, the way you compute the call system respond uh, to a thermal uh, uh, elevation uh, is, is through this uh, lock inverse gravitational field technique. So you couple this energy density with some uh, gravitational field. And, then, and, the, and the, you ask yourself how the system responds to this gradient of C, and finally you do this uh, Einstein regulation with the replacement. But then the problem is, uh, even in equilibrium state, the lo local current, the, you could have these uh, small loops, this is just a magnetization current. So this magnetic current uh, in equilibrium, they don't uh, give you a net current, just due to this uh, block theory that uh, Anton also mentioned. But if you, in the presence of the, some gradient of this per C, uh, uh, this, uh, uh, you, can, you can visualize, maybe, he, because it, it, it's, it's J multiplied this per C, so maybe here this J is bigger, there is small, smaller, and then another day you'll find that these are small loops, they don't completely cancel out, they have some net, net current. And this net current, it looks to be there, it, it appears to be there, but uh, they, they don't contribute to, to, to transport, because they will flow on the boundary and flow back. So, so you need to find a way to get, get rid of these uh, this, uh, small loops. So mathematically, it's related to uh, the, if you compute the, the current, then you'll find that uh, uh, there's a contribution in the linear response, for example, uh, related to the, the gradient, the curve of magnetization. But, uh, but the point is, uh, there's a total curve is, uh, is, uh, is what I draw here. It's a, it's a loop current. It doesn't contribute. So only this part contributes to, to transport. So, uh, so namely, if I compute the thermal electric response, namely how uh, electric current depends on temperature gradient, so the correct result includes this, uh, this, this part, this magnetization part. But the problem is uh, that all these are uh, large scale physics. So, so there's no way to, if you don't go to large la la uh, you, you couldn't uh, sharply de even define this app generally. And uh, to solve this problem, you turn out one need this uh, chain and co chain. So I don't think I have uh, enough time. Maybe I should. Uh, uh, basically, the point is uh, you can uh, define this. Uh, uh, so this is from, from uh, Anton's paper, actually. I, I, I learned all this from Anton's paper. So, you can define the, the party scale uh, local current operator, and this is a fully anisymmetric um, uh, object depending on these two sides. And uh, these are called the chains, and the, uh, there's this boundary operation of chains. So this is uh, this boundary operation of chains is re related to this, uh, for example, uh, this uh, part of it is, is related to this uh, continuity equation, right? So this, uh, this, this is basically the party scale uh, divergence of the current. So everything, basically, this, this, this technique is a way to do this calculus on, on lattice. Uh, so, the, uh, so similarly, you can define this cold chain, uh, and if you have gravitational field, uh, this, uh, this uh, co-boundary operation which send this uh, gravitational potential to the local gravitational field. And uh, the, uh, the magnetization can be uh, if, if, if it can, can be defined, then, then, then it should satisfy the, the, this relation. It's basically a, a lattice version of this a curl of M equal, equal J. <coughs> so, so everything can be defined and discussed on the lattice. And uh, so basically, this allows us to explicitly subtract all, all the loop current contributions in the nonlinear response. And eventually, all the uh, transport tensors are sharply defined for generic lattice Hamiltonians. And it turns out that the, the, the true-like contribution, when I do this partial, all the sigmas 
all these uh, linear response tensors uh, are the uh, transport linear response tensor. So you cannot use the, the Kubo, Kubo one. But if you use the Kubo one, it's the product. So the, so the calculation looks like this. So this, uh, to do this calculation, somehow you really do the, uh, this kind of uh, chain, co-chain uh, uh, on, on lattice. So that's uh, something uh, quite uh, uh, <coughs> so surprising to me. So, so I'm just trying to compute some response. So, so there's a non-trivial, uh, non-linear reciprocal relation. It turned out that this part of the derivatives satisfy this relation. Surprising, the, the, the point is all this ABC can be either thermal or electric. So that is sort of mix partial, say, partial kappa, partial A, with, say, partial alpha, partial AB. Uh, uh, so it, it mix all these uh, different response, uh, non-linear response uh, together. So I think this is a, uh, this identity only hold for the transport response. Uh, if you plug in the naive approval response, this will fail uh, generally. And uh, so, uh, so at least some, uh, okay, so, so, so the point is, we, this technique allows us to have a sharp defined calculation for this response. Um, for general, uh, that is Hamiltonian. Uh, but uh, well, we also carry out some simple exercise for the particles. So those are the results. So those also will give you the true part of the nonlinear response. Um, and uh, with this, uh, thank you for Relaxation time approximation? Uh, no, so, so I'm, I'm, I'm some kind of scattering, uh, assumption of scattering may affect the results. Yeah, that's why. So, so the calculation is just a bit of time behind conservation, and uh, we uh, didn't consider the We just have this, uh, this epsilon in the linear response. Sorry, in, in the time dependent response. So, yeah, so the. You know, this, uh, So the, okay. Yeah, so we only have this. But, uh, but phenomenologically, you can replace this uh, epsilon by whatever power. Uh, so that's uh, the usual. Uh, you know, we didn't consider it really like this. That's, uh, the, the so, so in fact, you assume each electron have a finite lifetime. Yeah, yeah. So then, the, 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 the phenomenologically, you just replace this uh, power by that. Uh, by that, uh, by that, by that uh, so, 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 so basically, in our calculation, how is it? How, how do I understand physically a high frequency gradient of temperature? It looks like. Yeah, I think uh, if you do at like, uh, like, uh, like, uh, 100 hertz, it's kind of time scale. So the, if it's um, um, slow enough, then, then I don't think uh, it's a problem. So it, it has to be uh, slow uh, compared to the very simulation time scale. Okay. Right. So, so it has to be slow enough so that it can thermalize. But uh, I'm, I'm, not, I'm not talking about very high frequency. Are you talking about uh, uh, experiment realization? Is that your question? Yeah, looks like in order for that omega plus, so the formula contains omega plus one over tau. Right. So I want, in order to get rid of the one over tau, I need the omega to be larger than one no, over tau. I think experimentally, you probably always in the regime where, where tau is dominant. Actually. In the case of the electric response, I can imagine yeah, omega yeah. much larger than one That's over tau. Questions? Uh, but uh, uh, well, also depend on. So basically, yes. Uh,